Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. I'm your host, David, and I'm ready to get out on the water and show you what I do to find and catch fish. So here it is, February the 1st, 2023. Speckled trout is closed for the month of February. So the plan today is first off to target this intercoastal waterway. I think first I'm gonna target some sheep's head on some of these docks and pilings and rocks. Um, you know, and then after that, we may push up and see if we can't find some redfish. So come along and we'll see you at the first spot. Wow, I didn't even get a chance to, to kind of take out my slack and I already got a first fish. Let's see what it is. Pulling decently well. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's a nice sheep's head. All right, so I didn't even have my net ready or anything. Let's see if I can get him into the boat. Well, that was certainly a good sign. All right, let's get him up. Okay, buddy. We want to get you up, get the measurement on you. Okay, good job. First cast, first fish. That lure was, or that shrimp was probably in the water for, I don't know, 10 seconds before it got that, before we got this sheet head. I don't have pliers ready. I didn't get anything ready. All right. All right, so a nice sheep's head here. He measured 14 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and get him in the box here in Florida. They have to be uh, at least 12 inches and you can keep eight. So we're gonna go ahead and get him in the box. See if we can't get our shrimp out and get another one. All right, getting bites. Got him. Got him, got him, got him, got him. All right, let's see what he measures up to. Got him, got him. Well, this is just good news here to get sheep's head like this right after the other. He's, he's kind of staying down pretty good. All right, come on, buddy. Let's get you up in this boat. Let's see what he measures out to be. All right, look at that. This is not a, this is not a sheep's head. This is a black drum. Look at that. Now this is a black drum. Now you can see they've got stripes and things like a sheep's head, but their body's a little more slender. And the, the main reason you can tell is they don't have those teeth like sheep's head, see? Just, um, you know, redfish looking mouth. So he's a keeper. We're gonna go ahead and get him in the box and uh, get that shrimp out there. All right, I finally got organized here. That first fish, I didn't have my net ready. I didn't have my pliers ready. So sometimes that's not being ready allows you to catch some fish, I think sometimes. But anyway, I got my pliers ready, my net handy. See if the bite continues. All right. Oh, we got off. Got off. Okay, got him. Got him, 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 got him. Oh, we got off. Well, getting some bites over here. Boy, I had those two fish. First cast, second cast, fish on both of them. Then it just stopped. So I'm just starting to kind of fan cast around me. Maybe the boat's scaring them or something, or the, I know the tide changes. 
starts rising here soon, so maybe that's some of it, I don't know. But at least I'm getting some bites over it. Kind of more towards the front of the boat. I don't know. Boy, that bite just stopped though, but I am getting a few bites over this way, so let's see if that can continue. All right, woo, all right. This feels like a good one. Let's stay on the hook. Let's stay on the hook. Stay on the hook. All right, he's feeling pretty good, y'all. He's feeling pretty good. Taking out some drag, trying to get back down to the bottom. Let's see what we've got here. Come on up here. Come on up. Let's see what we've got here. Good sheep's head. Good sheep's head. All right, y'all. That's a nice sheep's head. That is a nice, nice sheep's head. All right, he measured about 16 and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and get him in the box. It was good to get him, you know, I had those that fish on the first cast, the fish on the second cast, and then nothing. You know, I started casting to the side of the boat, started getting some nibbles and I picked up this guy. So, so I'm gonna get him in the box and get another shrimp out there. All right, y'all, let me show you what I'm using here. So this is a half ounce bird of prey fiddler crab type jig. Um, it's a nice little nice little rig. I've had a lot of success with it. I like it for a couple reasons. It's um, you know, it's just one self-contained thing. It's not the you know the weight on the bottom or the weight on the top. It just kind of makes it easier to kind of deal with casting and and that kind of thing. Um, number two, it seems to not get as stuck in the rocks as much. Um, I have a couple knocker type rigs jigs that um, jig heads that'll that seem to to get kind of stuck a lot but um this i'm able to get out quite a bit and i lose a couple but um you know for the most part i'm able to get them get them out so um here's how i like to rig this shrimp i've tried it several different ways this seems to get the best hookups for me so i just pinch off the tail there it's kind of hard with this little hook but you want to kind of take the shrimp and just kind of rig it up the best you can and then i like to come out right before the head because the head is kind of soft but anyway it kind of hides the hook pretty well but yet that hook is exposed so let's get him out there and then when i cast kind of get a little bit close to that shore not too close then i you know kind of let it have some slack and just let the current kind of take the the uh, bait where it needs to go and then just sort of wait on those fish to start nibbling it and when you feel that nibble it's hard not to jerk back but you got to let those sheep's head just sort of nibble at it and work at it and uh get it in their mouth before you set the hook Sometimes they'll just hook it themselves and you'll know you got them, but oftentimes you just kind of have to wait till you think it's solid in their mouth right now. All right. All right, he doesn't feel quite as big, but maybe he was just coming to the boat. Well, I take that back. I take it back. He may be a good one. All right, let's get him in the boat. Yeah, he does feel like he's decent. It's not a monster, but he does feel like he's decent. But main thing, it's a fish on the end of my line. All right. Okay, y'all, another sheep's head, another sheep's head. Okay, 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 okay. All right, 
just get a measurement on you. You are 15. Nice sheep's head. Look at that green on top of his head. The other thing you've got to have as far as your rig is a real sharp hook. That mouth is really, really tough. So you've got to have a sharp hook and a small hook to get some good hook sets. So let's go ahead and get him in the box. I believe I've got three so far. Three and a black drum. All right, y'all, well, this is a lot of fun. I can't tell you how much fun I'm having. You got this nice fog, sun starting to come up. It's a Wednesday, there's nobody around. It's not much of a breeze, it's getting kind of warm. So this is turning out to be a really nice day. All right, well, let's get another shrimp out there. Okay, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. Feels like another nice one. Well, he's taking some good drag out. Let's see if I can get him out of the rocks and out of this structure. All right, come on up here. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Straight down. Straight down. Let's see what we've got here. Assume it's a sheep's head. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. Okay, y'all, sheep's head number four, and he is a nice one. All right. Yep, he was hooked good. And he kind of came up and just nibbled for once or twice, but then just pretty much snatched it. So look at there, my hook broke. So let's go ahead and get another one out there. I'm running low on these. I got a new shipment in, coming in today, I believe. But uh, let's get another one of those on there. One of those fiddler crab jigs. Let's get this guy in the box. Let's get a measurement on him first. Thing you've gotta be careful with with these sheep's head. They've got these spikes that are super sharp on the bottom and on the top, so. They like to jump on you and move around and as any fish would. So he's a little over 15. So he's going to go in the box. All right, y'all. Good times. Good times. Something is just breaking the surface. Let's see if we can throw a little trout trick out here. I don't know what in the world that was. It's almost like it's right here oh it's an otter did you see that otter i hope that got him on film there he is look at him hey buddy what's up what's up let me guy you don't have to eat this trout trick i thought you were a redfish what's up bud you want a shrimp you've been eating my tails haven't you Hey, you like this area too, huh? All right, well, see you later. Let me show you how I attach my braid to my leader. Hopefully this is coming out on film. What I've got is I got my main line on this side, my leader over here. What you wanna do is just cross them, leaving, you know, several inches of of tag and then you can start with one either either one i always have my line on the right 
and I'm right-handed and it just feels more comfortable. Then you just do a double uni. And a uni knot, you just flip your, your tag in line that you're working with around all the lines that you've got it like that. And I just twist this through five times. Two, three, four, and five. And then tighten it somewhat. Don't cinch it down just yet. Then what I do, instead of trying to tie it this way, I flip the whole thing around so that I'm doing the same thing, the same mechanics, the same motions this way. And then you just do the exact same thing with your, your, your main line, wrap it around your fingers, around all the lines, kind of get, you don't want to have a bunched up line here, just try to keep them all laying down as flat as possible. And then I do this one seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You could do more. I found seven to be just about right. It doesn't make the knot um, too big. Sometimes if you wrap it too much, it gets, it just doesn't lay down right. Then you get your line wet a little bit. You can just pull your leader and your main line together until they meet and I like to kind of grab my tag ends just kind of pull on them a little bit against each other get that tight then you can just cinch them all down and then you just cut off your excess Okay, got him, got him. Well, he was playing with that for a long time before I was able to get him up, or before I was able to get him hooked. He's definitely going to the bottom. All right, let's just stay on the hook this time, buddy. Let's just, ooh, what is this? That's not a, that's not a sheep's head. Catfish? <laughs> well, Hardhead catfish. Nice one. But that's not what we want. You always know you got a hard head and you got all this slime on your line afterwards. Alright, well, hopefully that doesn't mean the sheep's head bite stopped. if he'll stay on this time let's see if he'll stay on this time come on up here buddy let's see what you are first going up under the boat it kind of feels like a catfish yeah it's a catfish All right, one more of those and we're out of here. Well, this has got to be a catfish. Yeah, it's sh shaking its head and doing all the catfish sort of moves, sticking to the bottom. Didn't know I had them. Yeah, it's definitely a catfish. I hope not, but it's acting like it. If it is, we're going to move. Yep. Another big fat one. Look at that dude.
Got him. Got him. Let's see what this is. Trout? No, 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 no. Tell I can get out of my fish. Yeah, a little speckled trout. Can't keep you, buddy. You're not legal today, but I don't think you'd be big enough anyway. See if we can get you out. All right, there you go, buddy. All right, he swam off. Good job. All right, so I didn't really get any fish back in the intercoaster waterway. I was trying to maybe pick up a redfish or so. It's about two o'clock. I've got some shrimp left. I think I'll stop at the uh, sheephead spot I was fishing earlier and uh, see if they uh, aren't biting again, and then then I'll head on back to the house. All right, I didn't get any other sheep's head at that sheep's head spot. It seems like that spot works best with an outgoing tide and sort of in the middle of the day that tide had changed. Um, so, you know, I didn't get any other. So I came on back to the house. So I'm going to go ahead and get these fish cleaned. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clean these fish. Before I get started, I'm going to make sure, you know, I have a nice, good, sharp knife. I like this little knife sharpener just to kind of keep it out here at the fish cleaning table. I like to kind of keep them sharp with a sharpener inside, but um, you know, you're gonna have to kind of sharpen a time or two in the middle of cleaning these fish. All right, so first step with any fish, you wanna kind of get the head off first. If you feel these sheep's head, they've got a hard part till about there. So you want to just kind of go just on the other side of that. Sometimes you can kind of wiggle yourself in between these scales and kind of get, get through them a little easier. Just like that, just kind of cutting down to the backbone. Now you want to just make a little slit in the skin here so that you can begin to get the fillet off. Best way I've found to do that is don't start here at the tail. I'll show you why in just a second. But if you start kind of where the tail begins and instead of doing this that's I've tried that it's it's hard to do if you just make yourself a little hole like that and then you just go what feels like you're going backwards and you're just kind of using just the tip just to get the skin cut That always works a lot better for me. And then I leave the, the skin down or leave the flesh down and I can feel those bones and I just kind of just make one, maybe two swipes at it till it hits the backbone. Now what I do is I know these ribs are in about this area right here so what I do to make these ribs easier to get off I go ahead once I've once I'm down to the backbone I put my knife on top of that backbone and just go all the way through the fish like this and then let me get a longer knife then I'm gonna take the back part of the fish all off at once the reason I do that is you have a little more flexibility in getting these ribs off and you see how I cut all this this off that's why you don't need to make your slit starting with the tail that's why you can go ahead and start with your uh, cutting your skin right here okay so once you've got that done to get these ribs off, you're gonna to have to kind of go up. So there's some some bones, these rib bones. And you just kind of work your knife, kind of following the the rib the bones up. So you can kind of see them right there. Those are all bones right there. So you're just kind of going up. And once you kind of get to about that far, then you can go ahead and cut the skin off and get your knife all the way through like this and just kind of go cutting down till you meet your spot that you cut through earlier. 
So see, here's all those ribs. And so, you know, no meat is missing, even though you feel like you're missing a lot. But if you kind of look at this, see, that's a almost a half an inch. So when you, you know, when you cut in this, you're going to have to visualize how far you've got to come up. So, okay, now you want to get the skin off. So first off, I kind of get this excess that you're not going to want anyway. And I just kind of follow it along. And you're having to go through the skin, that's the toughest part. And, and you feel some bones here, but I'm going to get those out after I take the skin off the fillet. I'm going to use my little bit longer knife. So I try to get this fillet as close to the edge of the board as I can. And kind of go down just slightly just to cut it. And then keeping your knife flat. You're just going to work just on top of that skin. Now what I do is I take my left hand and just follow along behind, right behind the knife, inching it up as my knife goes, just to keep good pressure on that skin to keep it from you know, folding over and that kind of thing. So there you go. So you've got your nice looking filet. Now we want to tend to these bones a little bit so you can see them right there. If you have some bones, they're going to be in this area, most likely right here. They may go down to about that far. So you can pick them out. I tend to just make a little V and get that out. And then you're done with it. And you're not going to miss that meat. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, everybody, welcome to the kitchen. We're going to go ahead and make some tacos out of these uh, sheep's head. So we're gonna do a couple step process. First off, we're gonna make our slaw to put on top of the fish and the tacos. We got our fish here. I've already kind of cut them up in taco sized um, pieces, you know, so they'll, so they'll fit nicely in our tacos. And I got these um, flour tortillas and I got a neat way to do those courtesy of my future uh, son-in-law. I'd like to show you that. So first off, let's go ahead and make our slaw. Um, this is kind of a cool way to do it. Instead of just leaving your lettuce just plain like this, you can jazz it up just a little bit. Now this is a tablespoon measurement and I'm probably not going to use quite this, quite a tablespoon um, for everything. But um, actually I'm going to start out with my dry ingredients first. Now this is um, your dried cilantro. Um, we looked and looked and looked, tried to find fresh, fresh cilantro, but um, you know we just couldn't find it in our supermarkets around here so I'm going to do close to a tablespoon it's just gonna kind of feel like what seems right that's probably about a half that's probably gonna be enough um, for that and then we want to do about the same amount of olive oil this is just your you know, this is your extra light olive oil works better good for seasoning type things like this and then lastly we're going to do about the same amount of lemon juice probably a little less you don't want to you can always add things like this taken away is obviously going to be kind of tough and just a little salt a pinch or so and some pepper. All right, so we're going to go ahead and mix that up a little bit. See, it's just lightly coated. You don't want it, you know, soaking wet kind of thing. Um, so that's going to be really nice. So we're going to set this aside for now. All right, so now that that slaw is um, ready to go, we're going to go ahead and get our oil going for our tortillas. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shallow fry these. Um, and this is just some some regular vegetable oil. So I've got a little bit in there, not too much. Um, you've got to have an, you know, you've got to have enough where it kind of floats in it, but any more than that is not necessary. So we're going to go ahead and heat that up probably to about a medium high, um, six on this oven out of 10. So that's going to be warming up, heating up. And while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and season up our fish. Um, you can use anything. I like this Cajun seasoning for our tacos because it's um, it's it's a little bit hotter than some of the others, um, and that's kind of nice with your um, 
with your tacos. So like I said, I've got all these kind of cut up in taco sized shapes. And we're just gonna kind of get a good amount on that. And then we'll season the other side when we get it in the get it in the pan. But that's go ahead good. That can kind of soak up that a little bit. And we'll see you back in a minute while this heats up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get these tortillas ready. Now I've got this, this is just like I said, regular vegetable oil. You know, I put my hand down, I feel a pretty decent amount of heat, so that's probably about ready. And if you see it kind of fry up a little bit, you know, and then you're just gonna go, I don't know, a minute or so on each side. All right, so after about a minute, just kind of do a flip. That's kind of what you're wanting for, you know, a nice little brown. And we've got these nice little taco holders. You can kind of get it in that and use your little tongs just to kind of make your taco shape. And go ahead and do a next one. All right, well, let's move on to the fish. We've got this cast iron skillet here. I've got some little layer of olive oil in it. I don't have too much, but I've got this heating up kind of a medium high. If you've never cooked with cast iron before, it's a wonderful vessel to use for fish um, you you just have to be careful cast iron um, holds heat generates heat very well which is really nice but what you have to be careful or for is you, is you don't really need to have it you know on high heat so I'm gonna go ahead and let this get warmed up and uh, we'll go ahead and get this fish on all right so I've got this heated up I'm gonna go ahead and get our fish in I, you know season this side so I'm gonna go ahead and put the the seasoned side down. Right, so go ahead and season the other side. Right, there we go. You know, GoPros are a neat invention, real small ways to get videos and opened up a lot of doors for, you know, capturing video and things. But one thing they haven't figured out is how to transmit smell. If you could smell this right now, you know, it would just make this video that much more exciting. You know, it's got that Cajun smell to it. You know, we've got this olive oil uh, smell. So I'm going to go ahead and flip all these because they're ready to flip. All right, so I'm going to start plating these up. All right, so look at that. So, you know, I could have done the fish a different way. I could have left it whole um, and then cut it. But um, I kind of like to do it this way. You just get a little more even cooking around the edges, you know, um, and that kind of thing. If you were to cook, leave it in one big fillet um, and then cut it, you know, you wouldn't have that uh, cooked surface, you know, where you cut it. So it makes it a little, you know, more difficult to deal with. You have to be a little more careful with it so it doesn't fall apart. But, um, you know, that looks like some good fish. And so let's go ahead and get this plated up. So we got our fish. We got our fried tortillas. And we got our different toppings. Um, we went to the grocery store today and we were looking for, um, you know, some sort of sauce to put on top. We've got this guacamole sauce, um, avocado ranch, Taco Bell product, and a Louisiana product, this fish taco sauce. So I'm going to leave this out and uh, I'm going to make a couple tacos with, um, with different sauces and we'll kind of see what they taste like. But, um, you know, first off, we leave these in these uh, little taco holders. Now, if you don't have taco holders like this, you got to get you a couple because th this is this would be very difficult without them. So, obviously, let's start out with some fish. A couple good pieces. That's going to be a big taco. Tomatoes, of course. There we go. A little messy, but good some little avocado here all right so I'm gonna go ahead and start off with this fish taco sauce on one of them and then I think I'm gonna go for the avocado ranch on the other all right let's give this a shot this is a good sauce it's got a definitely got a little heat to it got a little rumelade type sauce uh, taste to it so let's taste our tacos with this uh, avocado sauce that's nice too you know sheep's head for tacos is a really great fish it's a nice white flaky fish 
you know it can take that seasoning um, you know just a fabulous fish These sauces were a nice uh, choice to have to put different sauces on here and of course frying these tortillas um, you know that's really the kicker that that's restaurant quality sure hope you enjoyed this recipe we love to do fish tacos you know if you find yourself with some sheep's head or trout you know once you give this a try experiment with toppings experiment with sauces like we did and i know you'll you'll have a perfect tasting dish all right i do thank you for watching this video and before i give you today's takeaway if you like this style of video where I give you on the water action as well as my tips and techniques I use to find fish, then please hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. And also I try to get out one video per week, so hit that notification bell on so you won't miss any of my future videos. You know, we did pretty good at that sheep's head spot today, but you know, once that tide changed, the bite pretty much stopped. And I remember that's what happened on a previous trip. So today's takeaway is when you get back from a fishing trip, take a moment to jot down some of the specifics from that trip. Now there's apps out there that'll help you do that, but I think one effective and real easy way to do that is just make you a document in Word. And just be sure to include keywords um, like the weather, the tide, the time of day, lures used, bait used, so that when you have another fishing trip with similar conditions, you can just do a search for those keywords and uh, you know, kind of remember what you did on a previous trip that'll probably help you on that day's trip. So until next time, we'll see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.